What is up everybody? Flame back again with another video. Today's video is going to be how to decrease your network latency and improve your internet speeds for gaming on Windows. So basically I'm pretty sure everybody has seen a bunch of videos on this before, but change your stock DNS server for God's sakes. Like, do you know how many people I know who don't change their stock DNS servers? So like, it's as simple as right-clicking on the thing down here in the bottom right corner, hitting open network and internet settings, and just hitting change adapter settings. This part's a little bit more tedious though. And you're gonna right-click and hit properties. Now, as you can see, I have these pretty much all unchecked marked. Now, there's a good reason for that, and I'm going to go into that in the other video, or the other part of the video, sorry. <laughs> Basically, what you're going to want to do to change your DNS server is you're going to want to go into these properties. You're going to want to change them not to these. These are my DNS servers that I use because I am a fellow Wisconsinite, uh, Wisconsin, so I set that to the Wisconsin IP for my ISP, and... Then you have the Google's 8.8.8.4. I would recommend using Google's DNS server. So that would be 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Then just hit OK. Now, that's not the only thing to improve your internet speed. There is so much more you can do, and it all starts in Device Manager. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to search for Device Manager. And this should come up. You should see... Everything in here, all your system services, all this other junk that's listed in here. But the only thing we care about is your network adapter. So you're going to want to click your network adapter and you're going to want to right click and you're going to want to hit properties. Now, personally, I already have my network adapter configured, but in a scenario, you're basically just watching this video right now because yours probably isn't configured correctly. So first things first, I like to shut off power management because... This isn't a laptop. You don't need to save power, so just turn that off. Number two is tweaking the advanced settings. Now, if you you most likely have an Intel controller like me on your uh, Ethernet driver or whatever, then you can just tweak these settings as is. Now, just a fair warning, okay? You need a fairly beefy PC to have the settings I have, but... Um, if you have anything less than four cores and eight threads, then it's most likely going to slow your system down. So if you're watching this video and you have less than four cores and four threads, which is, uh, by the way, how to check that is you just hit task manager and you click CPU and you just hit change graph to logical processors. So I have eight cores and 16 threads, but if you see a four here and a four here, that is not good. You want either number one, have to upgrade, or number two, you have to tweak it a little bit less than what I have. Or otherwise, you're going to have some serious lag issues. All right. So we're going to start with the high end tweaks. So this is for everybody who has a high end PC like me. So if you have this thing here, ARP offload, we are going to set that to disabled. Enable PME, set that to disabled. Energy efficient Ethernet, again, not a laptop. Set this to off. Flow control, set that to disabled. Now, gigabit sla slave master mode, uh, you should just leave that on auto detect, but I know for a fact that I can force my controller to be a master in, in a slave. Basically, what it, that means is my computer is controlling all the network settings and not my router. So... It's not changing whenever I reboot the machine. That's what Force Master Mode does. Interrupt, interrupt moderation. Uh, you should have this enabled if you have a lower end computer and you have a lot of packet loss. Say if you're using a Wi-Fi adapter or something like that. The rate, all right. So basically you can set it to off if you have anything that has six cores or better. Like. For example, if you have a Ryzen 5 2600 or an Intel i5 10900K or something like that or a 10600K, I, I don't remember the naming scheme, you could just leave this on off. But if you're on a lower end laptop or a lower end desktop, you should set this to adaptive. That way you won't lose 
any packets, or at least not many, if you have a laptop. It just, basically what this is telling it to is to just offload some of the packets to your router instead of offloading them to your CPU, and that really hammers your CPU, by the way. Packets, like if you have this off, it hammers your CPU with constant information on the internet. So, all right, so IPv4 checksum offload. Now, this one is a little bit controversial. So, I like to set this to disabled, but if you have a lower end computer, again, I would recommend just not touching this or leaving it on RX and TX enabled. That way, your computer is offloading information more to the router than to your PC, which means it puts less of a strain on your PC. Again, I have a really high end PC, so there's no need to worry about that. Jumble packet, we can just disable that. You don't need that. Uh, IP v4, uh, v2, uh, disable both of these. Again, if you are on a lower end system, I would highly recommend enabling these, not disabling them if you're on a lower end system. Uh, you don't change this because this is just a random value. That's for administrator stuff. Log link state, uh, this is, you can just leave that enabled. I don't really know what that does, but I disabled it anyway. Number of RSS que queries. All right, so this this is only an Ethernet thing. This is not a uh, Wi-Fi thing, so you're not going to see this. But one is extremely intensive on your CPU. Like, that just hammers one core whenever you're using the Internet. And it's basically refreshing every second if you set it on one and the same goes for this two seconds three seconds four seconds refreshing every four seconds if you're on a low-end system i would recommend setting this to two or three or however high your value goes but if you're on a high-end system leave this at one uh ns offload you want to set that to zero or disabled sometimes it's a value yes sometimes it actually has a value you would set that to zero but disabled in my case uh priority in vlan this uh, you just disable. You don't want any packet priorities going to some stupid Windows service because if you didn't know, this setting is specifically for Windows services. It is not like for updates or for some other junk in the background. Now, PTP hardware timestamp, you're going to want to disable that because that's another hardware controlling thing. Receive side buffers. All right. So... If you have an Intel adapter, you can set this value as high as it goes. There's no need to have it lower than 2048 if you have a high-end Intel controller. So, but if you're on lower end, uh, set that value to 512. Uh, all right, so receive side scaling, that goes with receive buffers. You want to set that to enabled. Uh, reduce speed on power down, you want to have that set to disabled. Software timestamp, you want to have that set to disabled. Speed and duplex, uh, I would normally just leave this on auto navigation, but since I feel like I'm not getting the full ping and full speed of my Ethernet port, which it is a gigabit, so I usually set it to gigabit full duplex. But it, it really all just depends if you're willing to do that or not. So all these check loads, by the way, you're gonna if you're on the lower end, you're going to want to set these to RX and TX enabled so it does not strain your CPU. Again, cannot stress that enough. If you have a system that has less than four cores or four cores and four threads or four cores and eight threads, I would set those to enabled. Transmit buffers, same thing if you have an Intel adapter. Just set that baby all the way up to 2048. If you're on the lower end, again, set that to 512. Now, same thing here again with all these. I would recommend setting these to RX and TX enabled if and only if you're on a lower end system. I don't know how many times I have to say that throughout the video, but lower end system, RX and TX enabled. You you want the processor to not have that long of a load. Wait for link, you don't want that on. Again though, if you're on a lower system, I'd leave this on auto detect. Uh, wait for magic, uh, link settings off. That You could also leave that off on the lower end system too, it doesn't really matter. Wake up magic packet, you wanna set that to disabled. Wake on pattern match, you want to set that to disabled. And then after you're done with all of this, just make sure you're not doing any network tasks in the background and just hit OK. And you should see the Ethernet adapter go down for a couple of seconds and then re-enable itself. All right, so next week involves using the uh, 
Yeah, I know. It's a bad, it's a registry thing. Uh, I have to close this because I have some personal information in there, but I'm just going to drag it to my desktop so that I don't show anything. Okay, so this is a little thing called lowerping.bat. Now, what this does, if you look at it, if I hit edit, is it just disables a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of Windows services you do not need taking up your precious bandwidth. Now, again, this is going to differ on a lower end system, but this lower ping.bat is not a virus. It is actually literally created to give you a lower ping. I noticed immediately after using this, even before I did any of those tweaks mentioned, my ping went down by five milliseconds. And that's insane. It used to be at like 10 in, and then it went down to five after I did that. So even if you don't do any of these tweaks in this video, I would highly, highly recommend using this. I will put a link in the description down below so that you can download this for yourself. Now, the next application that I'm going to be using is also going to be a link in the description. So just follow along. All right, so you're gonna want to open TCP Optimizer as administrator. And you're just gonna wanna copy every single one of these settings that I have enabled. Uh, so first things first, you're gonna wanna run a speed test and depending on what you're supposed to get from your network provider, for example, I get 36 megabits a second. Uh, this is probably gonna be set at 100 by default, but it's recommended that you set this value to the amount of speed you are receiving, whether that's 10 megabit a second or 1,000 or 100 plus megabit a second. So next things next, we're gonna change this from current to custom. We are going to set Windows auto tuning to normal. We're going to Windows scaling, whatever that word is. I don't know what that is. Disabled. Congestive contr our congestion control provider. We want to set that to CTCP. Receive side scaling. We want to set that to enabled. We want to set our segment coloring our slang to disabled. And we want to set our MTU to 1492. That value. Uh, next, we're going to want to set our time to live to 64. We're going to want to switch all of these here to disabled, every single one of them. And once you're done with that, do not hit apply. We're going to switch over to the advanced settings. So next thing you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to set the max connections to 10 each and host. host. Wow, did I really just say horse? <laughs> oh, man. Host resolution priority, you're going to want to set this to 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, this value down here, I like to set this to 2 and disable just because it doesn't really make a difference. Um, timeout or RTO, you're going to want to set that to 2,000 as the initial. And minimum, you're going to want to set that to 300. Now, even if you're not a gamer or gaming in general, this can really improve your internet and make it super snappy on your system. So you're going to want to set QoS non-best effort limit to zero. You're going to want to set do not use NLA to optimal. You're going to want to go down to gaming tweak, network throttling index, and you're going to want to set that to disabled FFFFFF. And system responsiveness, you're going to want to set that to gaming zero. And gaming tweaks, you're going to want to set uh, TCP arc frequency to in disabled. You're going to want to set TCP no delay to enabled. You want to set TCP Dell ticks to zero or disabled. Network memory allocation, you're just going to want to leave this at default. And you're also going to want to leave this at default. You don't want to switch those. Those are kind of important. Uh, dynamic port allocation, you're going to want to have to set this to uh, 65534 as max port. And TCP timed wait delay, you're going to want to set that to 32. All right, so once you're done with all of that, you're just going to hit apply changes. Now, I have already applied changes, but once you hit apply changes, it'll apply your changes, and then it'll ask you to restart, but you're going to want to hit no. You're not going to want to restart because we're still going to be doing things. So... Another big thing that I recommend everybody do is to just make sure that any game updaters or anything like that are not running at startup. So like, for example here, 
I have uh, pretty much everything disabled for startup except for uh, Vanguard because I play Valorant. Um, any services in here that relate to a game launcher, so like Steam or uh, or Epic or whatever the other one is, I forget what most of those game launchers do, but you want to disable all those. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to head down to System Configuration. And you're going to want to open that and you're going to want to go to Services. Now, this is a little bit scary, all right? I know all this list here looks really scary. You don't want to use any of that. But look, the list gets less scary if you hit Hide All Microsoft Services. And basically, you're just going to want to look for every service in here that relates to an update service for a game service. So like, for example, BattleEye, Easy Anti-Cheats, uh, Google Update Services. You're going to want to just disable those at startup. Uh, Steam, you kind of have to keep Steam enabled, I figured out. Or otherwise, it actually doesn't let you log into Steam for some reason. But basically, any launchers in here that you don't need, you can just disable, hit apply, and then hit OK. So after you've done all of that, you can restart and we can start our speed test. So for example, I have speed test downloaded on my PC locally for a good reason and a good reason only so that it doesn't show my IP. You're just going to want to hit start and you're going to want to see what you're getting by default. Just to wait a minute for this to uh, go. Now my upload's a bit slow, granted. That's just how it normally is. You don't really see high upload when you're using cable. But my ping is uh, pretty damn low, considering the fact that it used to be much, much, much worse before. Uh, yeah, if you're trying to figure out where I live, that is not where I live. That is my ISP that is several miles away from me. That is not where I live. I'll probably just gray that out in the video anyway. So thank you for watching. If any of these helped you, in the just tell me in the comments. I'm having a little bit of a trouble speaking today. But personally, if it didn't help you, you can just go back in the videos and you can just go ahead and, you know, tweak things around and set them back to normal or whatever. Anywho, thanks for watching and I really appreciate you watching this video. Like and subscribe. I make some more videos on this kind of stuff and it actually has helped a lot of people in the comments as I've heard. And I'll see you in the next one.